What's up guys, Hillary Johnson, the founder and CEO of Hatch Tribe here. And today we're gonna to talk about a topic that might feel a little risque, and that's the topic of dying, and specifically regrets of the dying, and what we as business owners and entrepreneurs can learn. Now, the work that I'm gonna to reference today is from an amazing book called, as this is titled, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying by an author named Bronnie Ware. And she is a hospice nurse who had the benefit of being able to work side by side with people who were at the very end of their lives. And she would ask them questions about their lives and get to know them and learn from them. And over the time, she starts to hear some common themes and people at their deathbed, at the brink of, of leaving this planet, had some very common things to say. And the book was born out of that. And these, sorry, I've got an itch on the nose here. These top five regrets of the dying were the common themes that she kept hearing over and over and over from her patients. So she shared this book because when we examine death and we really know that that is something that inevitably we will all face, it can help shine light on our lives in a very positive and meaningful way. And especially for business owners, and that's really the intent for the conversation today, is to present this through the lens of an entrepreneur and a business owner and to allow you to see how this may be at play in your own life, in your own work, and potentially how to come into better alignment, to shift things, to um, avoid the pitfalls of getting to the end of your life and regretting in fact, the things that you've been doing largely in your business and how it's overshadowing or interacting with your personal life outside of your business. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and we're gonna work through these one by one I'm as soon as I figure out how to turn the slides. Okay, let's go. So um, it is helpful you know, to really consider that your days like my days are in fact numbered and Part of the reason this is really important for us as business owners is we tend to lose sight of this. Uh, you, like me, probably relate to feeling very driven, very uh, motivated, very goal-oriented, very like, I see something, I wanna make it happen. But we can get a little bit of tunnel vision. And for many of us, again, myself included, I poured a lot of time and energy and resources, blood, sweat, tears, like into my businesses, into their growth. And sometimes that means we just start to crowd out. The focus becomes very, very narrow. And so it is by opening up that lens a little bit, by considering the fact that yes, you are still a human. Yes, your days are numbered just like the person next door. How are you using your time? Are you using it wisely? So let's look at regret number one. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Let me point out a few words before we move forward. Courage. I wish I'd had the courage. Live a life true to myself, not the one others expected of me. Who has expectations on you, right? And consider that as a business owner, many times the expectations that we are considering are not our family and friends because those are sitting on the, the, the personal side of the coin. There are expectations there. But on the business side too, like what about your clients? What are the expectations they have of you? And how has that shaped you into doing things a certain way? What about your team members? What do you think their expectations are of you or of the business? And have you shape-shifted to form that? The question we really need to be asking ourselves is what do you really want to do? What do you really want to say? Who do you really want to be? What do you really want to change? Because remember, this is about being courageous to do the things that feel aligned for you. And sometimes that means a very significant change, a significant change in how you are being and what you are doing or what you are saying or not saying. And remember here, that courage will always precede confidence. Often I hear from clients and they say to me, I want to do this thing, but I'm scared. And I'm like, I hear you because we haven't gone there yet, right? Fear will often show up when it's uncharted territory. 
But courage, the root word of that, C-O-U-R, is heart. It will come from the heart and it will always precede confidence. You want to feel confident in the decision you're making. And I understand why you want to feel that. But confidence does not come before you take action. It comes as a result of taking action. So remember, we will always need to drop into our heart in order to take courageous action in our business. So I want to just ask you to reflect. I'm going to flip back on this for a minute. You know, what are some of the things that that you really want to do in your business or outside of it? You know, what are the things that you want to say that you're not doing? You know, where are you allowing other people's expectations to guide you against your own understanding of who you are and who you want to be? Listen to it. It's there for a reason. Remember, this is your life. This is your business. You're trading your days for this. So if you're living in, a, in alignment with yourself and what you desire at the heart, you're going to be pretty well equipped to move forward in your business and in your personal life because it's going to feel in alignment with what you want to do here. But if you're following the seed of what you think someone else wants, including in your business, you're probably off base, probably off kilter. Okay, next one. Regret number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Um, imagine this for a minute. You know, a lot of people get to their end of their days and they look back and examine their life and they're like, holy shit, like I gave a lot of my, my good years, my time, my energy, my effort, my solid waking hours, I gave them to my business. And there's not a day that goes by that this is not some business owner that I'm working with who's, who's telling me just how hard they're working. And I understand it, but we need to examine it. There's a quote, oh, I don't want my head on top of this. Oh my God, please let me move that. So I grabbed this because many of you have probably seen something like this on Instagram and it says entrepreneurship, it's living a few years of your life like most people won't. God, I'm itchy today. So that, uh, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. This is part of the problem. This is a story that we are being told that is, hey, business owner, go out and fucking kill yourself working real hard so you can make all this money and then coast through for some indefinite amount of time. And I'm not suggesting there aren't people who have done this and they got the time. They killed themselves, they worked really hard, burned themselves into the ground potentially, made a boatload of money and came to the other side and they got all the glory days. But what if those glory days don't come? And we really need to examine two parts of that. What if you put in all this time, energy, effort, etc., and you don't get the outcome you want? What if all that money doesn't actually come? Or what if it does, but it's too late? What if you burn yourself down in the health department to where you really cannot function well, not function optimally? Stress, overwhelm, et cetera, not uncommon amongst our entrepreneur friends. And it's, it's there for a reason, you know? Um, we can't expect to uh, pay lip service to our health and burn ourselves into the ground and then expect to have all that vibrant energy and vitality to go out and live our lives. In many cases, and I've seen this, people in their 40s or their 50s are dying. <laughs> and I say that, like, not to scare you, but to remind you, like, you may not get the glory days of thinking you're going to be retired at 50 or retired at 60 and enjoying the fruits of your labor. Babe, you got to enjoy it freaking now. So this is a thing that commonly comes up with business owners. And this is, again, it's a pattern that we picked up from a very young age. And I will be clear, this is one that's taken me a hard, a hard time, a long time to work through. One of the messages that I learned very early on is that hard work was part of what became my identity. If I worked really hard, it brought me in some ways some self-worth. Um, I knew that if I could work hard, I could get a result. And I took a lot of pride in that and really took a lot of that on internally. It defined a lot of who I was. A lot of business owners relate to this because, and it's not a shock, right? Business owners by nature are very self-driven and self-motivated. That is not accidental. So 
if we've gone through most of our lives believing that hard work is what's going to get us these results and hard work is part of what we start to hang our hat on and it's part of what says like this is who I am and we identify as it we start to put self-worth in that category so it doesn't become a shock that we could get to the end of our lives and let's look at this again we get to the end of our lives and realize we've worked so freaking hard and it's in part because we've had a lot of self-worth tied up in the idea of working hard so we put a lot of time and effort and energy into this camp of work and again, put the blinders on, we stop seeing all the stuff that was happening on outside of us. Then we get to the end of our lives and go, oh my God, there was all this stuff that was outside of the periphery that I failed to see. All my energy was in my business. All my energy was in my work. I gave the scraps to everything else. So take note of that. Take note of where you're crowding out the rest of the things that make life amazing. Third one, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Now, there's lots of ways and places this plays out, but remember, I'm looking through the lens as a business owner and entrepreneur. Where does this often come up? Often with clients and with our team members, and I see it a lot with team members. Businesses who really are not happy with what an employee or contractor is doing in their business, and instead of addressing it head on, they're kind of avoiding it. They're not being courageous and having the conversation that needs to be had. And often this is with a client too. You know, of maybe the scope of work has gotten sideways and you know you need to have a conversation. Maybe they're treating you disrespectfully and you know you need to have a conversation. It could be anything, but take note of the conversations you're avoiding because it almost always, there's a feeling there that we are not actually exploring. So what are you not saying that really needs to be said to your clients, to your team, or beyond? Examine it. Think about it. There's avoidance there. And this is the thing we have to remember. <clears throat> These conversations are courageous by nature. And we've looked at it before. C-O-U-R means from the heart. You're going to have to operate from the heart to have these conversations. But when you do, they are truly transformative. And I'm going to give you an example of one with a client that I worked with who will, of course, remain anonymous. There was a, a team member of hers that the work was really not in alignment with what she expected. And over many, many months, she kind of kept watching this employee do these things and go, oh, my God, she's doing this now. And oh, my God, I can't believe she's doing this. And she's mentally just taking note of all these ways that this employee is really not doing what she wants her to do. But she didn't want to address it because at the time she was like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'm just being nitpicky. You know, maybe it's not really that big of a deal. I also don't want to seem like a bitch. I mean, this is a, a real issue for women, the perspective that giving feedback is critical when really giving feedback is love, right? So I'm not saying feedback doesn't need to be given. It's just that sometimes Feedback is going to be hard to give and even it may be hard to listen to, but it is still important, right? So she avoided having all these conversations over and over and over, months, months, months in the making until one day she exploded and let it all come out in like a, a, like a picture of lava flow, like literally volcano explode lava flow. And there was some damage in the wake of that. And it, the relationship at that point was really too far gone. That's an example of what we don't want to do, right? We really want to be having conversations with our team and our employees repeatedly. It builds confidence. We know that courage precedes confidence, but it's also important for us running businesses. We simply can't run a business without expressing our feelings about things at moments in time as it makes sense. And certainly when you're running a team, you have to be able to do this. Okay, so just take note. Where are you avoiding some conversations? All right, let's look at another one. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Now, this is an, an interesting one. Again, remember people sitting at their deathbed kind of looking around going, man, like I wish I'd just I'd stayed in touch. I wish I'd spent more time here. What's one of the things that goes first as a business owner? So consider this. Let me move my face again. How are you prioritizing these things? And I'm just, I put a couple examples here and I'm going to give you what tends to happen. So your business, your kids, if you have them, your partner, if you have one or two, 
uh, your social demands. And I'm going to talk about that one in a minute. Your family, your friends. You know, if you're taking that rack and stack right now, how do you prioritize them? What I will tell you is that most business owners will tell me that if they're being totally honest, their business comes first, their kids come next, their partner comes after that. Although at times social demands end up creeping above that. And the example I'm going to give you, especially for those of you that are parents, is when your school calls and says, hey, we need parents to bring this to the school or we need you to pick up these things. And it's always something that's beyond the scope of the school day, but it's something that's add on or other parents that are then saying, hey, can you do these things? And there's like this sense of guilt that suddenly kicks in that you need to do that. So maybe social demands now creep up above partner. And then it's like, oh, well, there's your, still your family. Well, maybe family slates up in there somewhere, but your friends are dead last. I see this time and time again. And it's not to say that these other things don't matter, but remember, that's not what they're saying, right? The regret isn't, I wish I'd prioritize them above all. It's, I just wish I'd stayed in touch with. This isn't about quantity, but it is about the quality of those interactions. So. I think you need to examine for yourself, you know, what is the story that you're telling yourself about the time that you spend outside of your business? Do you think that when you're spending time with your friends or with your family or otherwise that it's taking away from your business? This is a common thing I hear. I wish I didn't have all these other responsibilities so I could spend more time in your business. Oh shit. That's the regret. So remember, the time spent out of sight of your business is just as important as what you will spend inside of it. And arguably, the best business owners are not the people that are always entrenched in the business. And part of that is because you do not get perspective. Why? Fucking blinders. If all you do is you're living in the vacuum of your business, you really are not getting the, the appropriate influence from outside. Right, So that business may be making money, but that tells me that you're not prioritizing anything else. If you make money, the soul, the soul, what's the word I'm looking for? If you put money on a pedestal and you idolize it, it will become the false idol. So remember that your life, when you get to the end of the end of your road, do you want it to say like, she was really good at making money or you want to say like, she was a fucking amazing friend. She showed up for me. I don't know. Ask yourself. All right, let's look at the, the last one. I wish I'd let myself be happier. This is one, again, that I hear constantly with business owners. What do I hear when I talk to them? I don't know. Oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. There's so much going on. We totally screwed this thing up. It didn't go right. I'm like, this is spinning out of control. This person's not doing this thing. We didn't meet this goal. Negative, 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 instead of the other side. You know, we made really good progress on this. We did this thing and it turned out pretty cool. I'm excited about this. That's a freaking choice. That is a choice, babe. So you need to be cognizant of these things that are happening. And any given day, what's coming up for you? What are you feeling? Are you having feelings of guilt for the things that you didn't get to? Are you beating yourself up about things you did or did not do? Are you feeling like you're always behind and letting that be a story? Are you literally persistently overwhelmed? If so, there's a negative ticker tape that's rolling. Do you apologize unnecessarily? This again for my women, friends, babes, you got to stop saying I'm sorry unless there's actually a reason to say I'm sorry. <laughs> we say I, I'm sorry and we apologize when we've done something wrong. And you do not have to apologize when you're telling someone no. So if someone asks you to do something and you're like, yeah, I really want to fucking do that. The answer's like, no thanks. I really appreciate the invite. Not going to be able to say yes to that right now. Move on. Keep eye on that. So let's look at this. Finding joy is critical for your long-term success. And I mean that about your business. You cannot run a business looking at the half of the, the, the empty cup. You can't look at it as half full, but that negative bias does not keep you hungry. 
it keeps you demotivated. It keeps you beating yourself up. It keeps your team also in a state of not feeling really fucking great about their work. Great company cultures never focus on glass half full. Great company cultures always focus on glass half full. Did I say half half empty? <laughs> Let me back up on that one. Great company cultures are never focusing on the glass half empty. They are focusing on glass half full or more. They are celebrating their team. Do you think great company cultures come from beating people up, telling them how shit they are, how they should have done something right? Uh, no. So why would you think it's any different for you? Examine it. Be curious about it. Okay, this is the book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, buy the book. Read the book. Take it to heart. Really consider this. I mean, you are not here on this earth to just work. You're really not. And if you think you are, you're missing the point. I don't want you to wake up at the end of your life and suddenly be looking back going, what the fuck just happened? Like, how did I just spend the last 20, 30 years of my life pouring all most of my good energy, attention, and focus into this business and then look around at the vacant part of the rest of your life? That's not it. You can build your business in a way that really takes into account both that truly says, you know what? Building a business is important, but so is the bigger picture of my life. We call that the sustainable way. And it's really honoring the fact that your life is about a lot more. You can build a beautiful, flourishing business that makes you ample income that you really can enjoy. And you can live the life that you also enjoy. It does not have to be a trade-off. That is an old paradigm. It's also set up by the patriarchy. So all of you out there that want to fight that dialogue and fight that narrative, question where it came from. It doesn't have to be that way. Those are choices you are making. Make the choice. Build your business in a sustainable way. Build your business in a way that really allows you to enjoy the life that you have and build a business that can be flourishing and do really good work in the world and help you earn the income that you want. You can have both. It's not a fucking trade. Stop falling into the trap. All right. If you want to work with me, you can. I do business coaching. You can join our mastermind. You can come to a retreat. Um, I invite you to. I encourage you to. Reach out. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.